This video is sponsored by Notion. Sometimes it feels like I'm never making progress, even though I put in all of this effort. I hate this feeling. I have a confession to make. I've become a productivity junkie. I've tried everything. I've read all of the books, to-do lists, deep work, Pomodoro timers, atomic habits, bullet journaling, time blocking, inbox zero, getting things done. The reason I put in all of this effort is because I'm ambitious. I'm one of the busiest people I know. I work a full-time job at a big tech company as an L7 principal engineer. I make videos for this YouTube channel and I have a growing family that I wanna be present for. But I also have hobbies. I like to play computer games and golf, watch sports, snowboard, and travel to take photos. I only have one life and I think I have it figured out. Well, kinda, let me explain. I have this theory. Well, these theories about productivity. I've been developing them since the pandemic started and they've been evolving, especially with the emergence of AI. And the one constant throughout this time period is that I've been using Notion, the sponsor of today's video. Notion has helped me reclaim the most time over the past several years. It's customizable, adaptable, and can change with me. And now they've just released Notion AI. I've had access to Notion AI for the past couple of months, and it's given me back even more time because they've done a really thoughtful job with it. Notion is an all-in-one workspace for managing your knowledge, tracking projects, and collaborating with others. It allows you to plan, organize, store, and share all of the information you need in one place. In this video, I'll show you exactly how I use Notion to organize my life and how I use Notion AI to save time and to amplify my creativity. And I'll share with you the three lessons that I've learned about productivity and AI. I've been curious and dabbling in machine learning for about 15 years now, and I have these feelings about AI. <laughs> Boy, do I have feelings about AI. When you talk about productivity, you have to talk about the output. What's being produced? The biggest thing that I use Notion for is writing. Notion is awesome for writing. Everything in Notion is centered around the concept of pages and databases. I have a database for all of my YouTube videos and ideas that haven't yet become a video. Let's create a video script together from scratch. Well, actually, we'll start from a template. Templates are a really powerful concept within Notion. They allow you to create pages and databases with a predefined structure. There are literally thousands of templates that you can download for free. Templates aren't set in stone. You can customize them to fit your needs. Uh, this template and database came from Ali Abdal, which I've altered to fit my workflow. So let's write a video script on how to use Notion and Notion AI to become more productive. Creating a new page from a template will automatically generate all of these sections. If you know anything about YouTube videos, thumbnails and titles are really important. And I like to start there first. Notion is a great writing tool. You can type in Markdown inline, which is really natural to me as a developer. To use AI, all you have to do is hit space and it pulls up this entire menu. <laughs> and it came up with a couple of things that I thought was good. So Notion AI logo with robotic hands holding a Notion notebook, a screenshot of the Notion AI interface with AI elements surrounding it. Okay, let's just add that in there. Let's come up with some title ideas. Um, I like to come up with at least 10 title ideas. And if I get stuck, I can use the brainstorming function. Cool. Let's keep those. I like to work backwards from the type of comments people want to leave me. So let's see here. This video on Notion was awesome. And I like to think about the video concept and structure before getting into the content. Let's see here. So I'll have an intro, I'll have an outro. So let's center it around how I use Notion for writing, how I use Notion for planning and goal setting. And let's do how I use Notion to store my... Okay. And I'd like to layer in thoughts about productivity and AI in general throughout the video. So I'll do point one about 
productivity and AI. Point two about productivity and I, and then point three about productivity and AI. Perfect. Now what I'll do is I'll just copy the structure and use it as a basis for my script. Five minutes later. And we're basically done. Now I can move this item to the right column of my workflow. It's now in the needs rewriting phase right before I'm ready to film. Which leads me to my first point about productivity and AI. You should aggressively use computers and AI for undifferentiated heavy lifting. I could write my scripts with pen and paper, but that's dumb. Copy and paste is crazy useful. I can type faster than I can write. And I know how to spell and I understand grammar, but there are a lot of different words and a lot of different grammar rules. Writing AIs, Notion AI included, are trained on many millions of pieces of text as part of their large language model. Writing a script used to take me many hours. It still takes me some amount of time, but I aggressively use Notion and Notion AI to do the undifferentiated heavy lifting. You should also use AI to do things that you aren't good at to amplify your voice. Like, I'm terrible at Twitter. I just don't get it yet, but I wanna grow my presence there. Here's a script for a video I published. Let's ask it to create a Twitter thread. This is a pretty good starting point, but I'm going to make a couple of tweets and let's post it on Twitter. Boom. I'm good on Twitter now. Move over, Elon. Let's talk more about traditional productivity, like goals, planning, tracking, and tasks. This is where Notion shines because I think of it as a meta productivity application. Let me explain. The most basic capability of any productivity software is tracking. You can think about tracking in terms of folders and files, but the primary abstraction in Notion is a database. Notion is an infinitely customizable, no-code database. One of the first projects aspiring software developers build is a website that connects to a database which supports CRUD or create, read, update, and delete database operations. It's a good project because you can pick a front-end framework and connect it to different back-end databases. It's also good because a lot of applications are essentially CRUD applications. So it's really good for getting to understand how apps work and websites. Example toy projects are recipe trackers, task lists, reading lists, trackers, stuff like that. But it's a crazy heavy lift to create a whole website and database stack every time you need something. I started journaling in February for 10 minutes a day. Here's the database with every journal entry. It's not much to look at. I can make it much more pretty, but it gets the job done. But the most effective thing I use Notion databases for is goal setting and planning my weeks and my approach has changed so much over the years. I used to do yearly planning. Then I abandoned yearly planning for only weekly planning. Then I abandoned all that and tried to break everything down into prioritized tasks. I tried the getting things done framework. I tried deep work time blocking and everything in between. And Notion has been there for me as I've tried all of the fads. There's a graveyard of abandoned systems in my Notion. I call Notion a meta productivity application because I can easily customize the databases and templates. I've created a template for how I currently set goals, do planning, and record my achievements. It's lasted about six months, and I found it to be pretty effective. But I may abandon it when I discover a trendy new productivity system. And that's okay, because productivity is seasonal, because life is seasonal. At my current employer, Q4 is when it's crunch time. A lot of yearly goals need to be finished up, and it's also the busiest shopping season of the year. And when the new year rolls around, there's a collective exhalation. Things slow down a bit, and ramp up again uh, until the next year's Q4. Your company may have a different life cycle. You may be a student or a teacher with two big semesters and a summer break. You may want to start preparing for interviews in a couple of months. After you get a job, things are gonna change. My current goal setting and planning process takes seasonality into account. What works for me is to create goals that are about a season or a quarter long. If they only take a week to finish, that's more of a task for me. And if they take longer than six months, the world could change in the meantime, and it puts my goals at risk. Let's create a goal and weekly plan together with my template. If you're interested, you can get access to my template in the description. My patrons on Patreon get free access to all of my templates. Here's my current goals and planning template. 
It may not look like this in the future because I'm constantly updating it. Uh, don't worry though, every update will have a video walkthrough of the current features. So let's create a goal together. All you have to do is go down to the goals database and hit new uh, goal template here. Let's make that full screen. And there are prompts for um, everything here, but let's not worry so much about it. So let's suppose that we're creating a goal for uh, starting a YouTube channel. You can add an icon uh, and a cover. I like to do that sometimes. The status of this goal is not started. The category is personal. And let's have the start date be tomorrow with a deadline of May 1st. I'm a really big fan of SMART goals. SMART stands for specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time bound. So there are prompts to my entire thing. I'm just gonna fill it out really quickly. But I actually think that the relevant and time bound parts are much more important than the other parts. The problem is that our SMAT doesn't roll off the tongue. So I like to start with relevant. Why does this goal matter? If I complete this goal, would it represent an achievement? And so let's talk about specific and measurable goals. Let's see here. Okay, and so the way I think about achievements uh, or the achievability of a goal is that it's on a gradient. There's some easily achievable targets and then there's uh, practically impossible targets to achieve and so th these set of prompts here help you figure out what the bounds of those that gradient is so that you can maybe find a Goldilocks target in the middle. So I would say an easily achievable target would be one video. And a practically unachievable target would be, I think 10 videos would be, would be pretty tough. And so let's try, let's do a Goldilocks of, of five videos. I like to think of the time bound uh, aspect of it as well to be um, a gradient, right? So an easily achievable time frame would be six months, right? And a practically unachievable time frame would be something like three weeks. Five videos in three weeks, I think, just starting a channel would be would be pretty rough. So let's say that an ambitious but achievable time frame is three months. And you can use the rest of this part here to um, come up with progress. This is actually a great, great usage for AI. Um, just print space and let's say, uh, uh, create a work back plan. That's pretty crazy. This looks pretty good. So if we go back to the thing, you can see that my goal shows up here as not started. Let's move it over to active. And what I like to do is to create a weekly plan. And so here's a, an example weekly plan. Uh, this is week eight as a start date of uh, yesterday uh, and an end date of a week from then. And so with my weekly plans, I like to reflect on the previous time period set an intention, obviously enumerate all of the tasks that I need to do for that week, but also uh, set a commitment, right? And so what I've done here is put a little bit of text to reflect on the past week. I've spent a little bit of time thinking about how I want to accomplish the goals in the upcoming week. And um, I've come up with the task. Uh, so for this first week's task, I, you know, it's going to be pretty simple. I'm going to create a channel with some cover art going to come up with the name for the channel, uh, create a banner and publish uh, an empty channel. Also, what I like to do uh, with these weekly plans is to hit this little star button right here, which pins the page to my sidebar. And so I can quickly navigate to uh, my weekly plans uh, from there. Suppose that I've completed my YouTube channel goal, I can move it from active to complete. And uh, one last step is uh, because this goal represents an accomplishment, I can migrate my goals from this template uh, to my brag book template. Just like I'm a productivity junkie, I'm also a reformed browser tab junkie. 
If you're like me, you have a bunch of browser tabs open, sometimes so many that you can't even read the title or see the icon. And if you're also like me, your solution is to create a new browser window. I used to have tabs open for articles that I wanted to read, but I was afraid of losing. And for me, bookmarks don't cut it. I don't know why bookmarks aren't a thing for me anymore. And so what I do now is use a Notion browser plugin to save these pages for me. There are a couple of them to choose from. I use this one because it allows me to save the pages onto a database. I clip the pages into a notes inbox database that I've set up. And from that point on, I know that it's safe for me to close the tab. Every once in a while, I go to my notes inbox and move the items into different areas to consolidate them. I have areas for things like system design, golf, and productivity. So when I need to look up my resources for system design, they are all consolidated in the same place. This brings me to the last thing I've learned about productivity, which is that you should use your brain for having ideas, not storing them. Now, with Notion AI, I can go a step further and have it summarize articles for me. Here's an article on a fast algorithm for finding the shortest path with negative graphs. All I have to do is select it, right click, and then ask AI to summarize it. Computer scientists have developed a new algorithm that solves the weight problem of finding the shortest path between two points with negative weights. The algorithm uses a fracturing procedure to break a graph into tight-knit clusters connected by a directed acyclic graph, which makes it easier to find the shortest path. The researchers proved that their process for randomly deleting edges would almost always require just a few deletions to eliminate backward edges, which made it extremely unlikely that any of the shortest paths would pass through too many such backward segments. The algorithm is the first for negative weight graphs that runs in near linear time, which means that its runtime is nearly proportional to the time required just to count all the edges, the fastest it could possibly be. Wow, that's absolutely crazy. I'll probably read the entire article to get a more in-depth understanding of what's going on, but this summarization is absolutely insane. Now when I take the tabs from my tab graveyard and move it into Notion, what I do is I run summarization on them and that way I know which articles I should spend a bit more time on and dive into without having to read the entire article. This saves me a ton of time. I will gladly exchange my money for my time back. Notion AI is only 10 bucks per month. And if it saves me even just an hour in that month, it's easily worth it. Notion on its own is free to try. Go to notion.so slash a life engineered or click on the description to sign up and see if it's right for you. If you like this video, check out my video on how I have time for everything, where I talk in more depth about how I manage and allocate my time. I hope you're having a productive day.